Hey guys, Coach Cindy here and just wanted to welcome you to our virtual award ceremony. I kind of want to start off with saying a big I'm sorry because um, this is officially a month later than what we had planned to do awards. As you know, COVID kind of threw a wrench into everyone's lives and everyone's plans. And like most of you or a lot of you, I'm assuming you've been wishing and hoping, you know, things will return to normal and we did too. Um, so that's why we're a little delayed. I would have loved to be able to do this in person and celebrate the season with you guys because, man, it was an awesome season. And, yeah, I'm going to dive into that here in a little bit, but I just want to say, again, I'm sorry for the delay, and we will get all of your, your kiddos their awards here really soon. What a year for CORE. <laughs> this is our biggest year, six teams, 77 kids and amazing parents amazing coaches and just I love this club and I love all of you for your support I want to kind of start by touching on our community uh, contributions this year a little bit because you guys played a huge part in everything that we did and why we were able to do everything that we did for our community so I have a cheat sheet so sorry if I'm looking down y'all because I won't remember all of this, there's a lot. So this year we donated 600 books, three quarters of those went to Operation Paperback and the rest went to a local organization called Family Tree. We made 80 blessing bags and donated about $200 in extra supplies to Stand Up For Kids Denver. We helped Coach Kyle raise over $4,000 for the St. Baldrick's Foundation. So even though we missed out on a really awesome servathon this year, Kyle still was able to reach that goal of his um, and hit that $4,000 mark. So if you don't know what St. Baldrick's is, um, please take time to look them up. Um, they are a child cancer research organization. Um, it, child cancer has unfortunately affected a few of our families' lives here at CORE. So that is a very important organization to us. Um, of course, we sent Christmas cards and care packages. Um, those went overseas to two different troops. Uh, that was with Operation Christmas Cards. And then we also had uh, monetary donations that went to Second Wind for Child Suicide Awareness, Freedom Service Dogs, Volunteers for Outdoor America, Toys for Tots, Foster Source, the Jeffco Action Center, and the National Center on Sexual Exploitation and Human Trafficking. Um, this year, one of our group building, um, or group bonding events was supposed to be Buddies Builders, which some of our kids have done in the past, and that's building dog houses for some less fortunate families um, that adopt through Denver Animal Shelter. So we missed that, but I still managed to come up with about 60 rope toys. So we'll be donating those to Denver Animal Shelter here shortly as well. Again, I can't thank you guys enough, especially when it came to the book drive. I think almost every single family in the club brought something to that or helped us sort books for that and that was a huge undertaking um, and that we couldn't have done that without you so thank you um, as i mentioned this was our biggest season here at core and i'm not going to dive a whole lot into everyone's um, teams i'm going to let the other coaches kind of give you the rundown on on how their seasons went but i do have some information that i'd like to share with you that the coaches themselves may not have had that information and I'm just really darn proud of it. So I wanna share it with you. So this year, half of our teams actually finished in the top half of their age divisions. Um, that's the best that we've had ever. Uh, not saying our program hasn't been successful, but typically because we're small and we're still considered new in the region, a lot of the time we start off pretty low and it's a battle to get up any higher than that. Um, so this year, getting half of our teams in the top half of their divisions in the RMR is awesome. Uh, the 13s actually finished 45th. They moved up 20 spots since their first power. 14s finished 48th out of 108 teams. 15s finished 58th out of 99 teams. 16 red finished 45th out of 94 teams and 16 blue finished 85th out of 94 teams. 
I do want to take a second and talk about 16 Blue because that team, man, they had some serious, serious obstacles this year. Huge road bumps. Um, from losing a coach a couple of months into the season to losing players due to injuries and other issues, almost no one on that team played a position they played before. We had kids that were hitters that all of a sudden were setters and kids that were a libero their whole life that's all of a sudden playing a hitting position. Outsides playing in the middle. I mean, it was, it was a challenge for these kids and they went through, you know, three coaches, myself in the middle of there until we got Coach Emily on board and they handled it like, like all stars. Um, so while that number to you might not look or sound very impressive, they had so much growth, and I'm incredibly proud of everything that that team did this year. Um, lastly, our sixth team in the club was our 17s team, and they finished ninth uh, in the RMR um, out of 70 teams, and they were the first team in club history to hit Division I in their age group. So that was, that was super, super exciting. Um, Next, before the other coaches do their awards, I do want to acknowledge um, all of the players of the month that we had throughout the season. Um, unfortunately, again, that's another thing that was cut short, so we don't have them for March and April. But up until that point, um, these are all the kids that did receive Player of the Month acknowledgments on our Instagram and Facebook pages. So Rachel, Angelina, Jensen, Victoria, Lily, Trinity, Alex, Ellie, Greta, Haley, Martha, Han Fei, Sage, Shay, Kate, Delaney, Whitney, uh, Emily, Taylor, Maisie, and Liz. So all of you will be getting um, a little medal that will go along with your Player of the Month um, accolades that you got during the season. So you can look to get that pretty soon. Um, and then I think here in a second, I'm going to turn it over to Coach Mike to talk about our 15s, 16s, and 17s and uh, how they survived conditioning practice this year because you guys did awesome. Hey everyone, it's Mike, the conditioning coach. I'm sure we haven't all spoken, but I'm sure the girls that showed up to conditioning cursed my name every night. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to all the girls for working hard. Um, there was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, uh, a lot of sweat, some tears. Uh, that went into the conditioning, but they all worked hard and they powered through a lot of the hard sessions. Um, like the, get, like the uh, cardio was not their favorite. Uh, leg day was definitely not their favorite, uh, but they still powered through it and they all improved so much the year, um, the short season that we had that I'm very proud of them. And uh, I think all the coaches are proud of them for all the improvement and the heart that they showed. I hope to see you all again next year and uh, get you all jumping higher. Greetings and salutations. Uh, Coach Dave of the 13s team uh, and the 14s team. So we'll start out. Uh, first, I want to talk about and thank our parents. Okay? I coach two teams, and you guys put up with an awful lot of craziness from me. and. Without you, I couldn't coach, so I just want to say thank you. Second, I want to thank Coach Cindy for allowing me to coach two teams because that really pushed me out of my comfort zone more than anything I've ever done, so thank you for that. Um, and yes, I'm the Marty Schottenheimer of coaches. I also want to thank our psych mentors, Ashley and Chris. Uh, they did a great job. Anybody that knows me knows how important the mental aspect of sport is. And they did just a fantastic job towards a really healthy growth environment. So thank you to you guys too. First, I have to tell you that our 13s team was insanely young. Over half of them were only 11 years old when we started the season, okay? And they did finish in division four, and that's after quite a bit of turmoil in the way some of their tournaments actually happened because I wouldn't think a team could win every set in their first powers and not move up but that happened the thing is that 
these girls did they never let that get them down they just fought every match because they saw the purpose which was just improving and getting better and i love that about them they just always dug their heels in one of the big areas that the team improved in um, was their back row defensive play and that kind of goes out to ruby morgan and ella for their part okay other players played back there, but that was definitely their domain. And those three really set the tone for how this team improved over the season. So I want them to know that they really are integral because a lot of players that don't get to play front row sometimes think they're not as much a part of the team. Well, that's hogwash, and they were really important to the team. All right, so you combine that back row play with the firepower of Trinity and Maisie, Alex, Rory, and Elizabeth, and Layla, and it's no wonder they never gave up fighting. They really depended on each other, and they really became a sisterhood, like I always tell my girls. My 13's assistant coaches, Megan and Rachel, were really so critical for me. Because I did coach two teams, I really depended on them to help run drills so that I could kind of space my energy out through the time during those days. And they were always a shoulder for me at matches, okay? I need my assistant coaches. They are so important because they're the ones I turn to and mumble things under my breath, and they're the ones that I pray to when I want something, and they're always there to keep me up, okay? And so I really appreciate you guys. Now, our third team's team wasn't just made up of the roster players. We had two practice players, and those were Kate and Allie. Okay? Kate is what I call a utility player, and that is because I could always ask her, go to the left, be on the right, and she would take up that position, and she knew. Okay? I swear sometimes we had like this mental bond going. And then you take Allie. If you walk into the gym and you see Allie, you just immediately go, she's a middle. And that's because she's real tall, <laughs> okay? But Allie really worked so hard on that, and her serves, too, just have come so far. And I can't wait till she's on the roster this year for the 13s because she's going to dominate the middle. Elizabeth, who played middle for us all season and was really fantastic, not only improved all around, and that shows because she did receive votes in four categories. The players just love her. But what really I loved about her this year is how her confidence grew. She really gained in confidence, and she started leaving the earthly confines and jumping in the air and attacking the ball and really focusing on everything she needed and in addition to her serving. Now on to the awards. Lila is kind of the glue for this team. I think that's because she was a practice player last year and kind of learned the ropes of club. That's probably why she was voted by her teammates, team mom. Always looking out for them, making sure they knew what to do at tournaments. I remember sitting with her last year's banquet and talking about this year and how awesome it was going to be. And what's really awesome is I think she's going to be able to be on the 13s team again next year. I told you they were young, and that's why she's our team mom. Ruby, or as I would call her Ruby Roundhouse at practices, has been named by everyone our funniest player. And if you meet her, she's kind of a jokester. But what I love is Ruby learned this year from club that she could combine that humor and still have fun and get better. And I really love that about her. And her back row passing and her covering and her off blocking was just amazing. Now, I mentioned that our back row defensively really made some big strides. They did. And our most improved award goes to Ella, all right? Ella not only improved defensively, but her serving came on by strides. In addition, 
she had some back row attacks that just left everybody's jaws on the ground and it was just great her teammates would just scream and go crazy every time she got one and that's probably why they voted her most improved player the team definitely did have some hustlers and there was a lot of heart too and anybody on the team knows that there was one girl who seemed to be everywhere all at once. And our Hustle and Heart Award goes to Maisie. Maisie could be in one spot and then instantly move 10 feet. And she'd be in the air. And we're all like, where did she come from? But that was Maisie. She was always working for the ball. And um, she's just going to be an amazing player as she grows up. And when she goes to Golden, they're going to be lucky to have her. Another thing that this team was loaded with was a really strong core of servers. Those six servers really did dominate, but all of them voted Trinity as our top server. She was actually able to earn two 10 serve t-shirts, which was really awesome, and I, I love that about her. She really works on it constantly. Goes to Alex, and I will tell you, I've coached over a thousand players easy. I've had a lot of setters. And I'm sorry, I'm going to get emotional. I push that kid harder than any setter ever. It's not even a contest. I swear down in Colorado Springs, I thought I broke her. But she is so resilient, and I made sure she knew how much I loved her and how much I believed in her, and that's why I was pushing her so hard. I mean, that tournament was brutal, and those girls went through a lot of changes, but she got to this one match, I'm sorry, and she figured it out, and they figured it out, what the other team was doing. And she all of a sudden just started seeing the trigger plays. And before we knew it, the other team didn't even know what happened, and they maybe scored like three more points because she just was in position put it up, kill, put it up, kill, over and over, and it was just wonderful. Just, she's going to be a fantastic setter. All right, my team was also blessed with really dominant middles with Rory and Elizabeth. But Rory was named top attacker, and believe me, she deserves it. Although I'm glad I'm not voting on him because Elizabeth also really dominated the middle. They would honestly probably go up for some balls that they should have let their back row get but they were so aggressive and sometimes they just somehow got them but Rory I probably couldn't even track how many kills she had sometimes it was just over and over and over so congratulations to you on that back to the back row they made so many huge strides but our team voted Morgan as our defensive player now, as a dynamic defender, you have to be an individual that's really willing to go for anything. And honestly, Morgan Polly hit the floor more than Emily Gittens of the 15s, when I remember Emily. She really saved our hide so many times, and Morgan does it with such bubbly joy. She just loves playing the game. And one of the other things I love is getting a patented Morgan hug. They're priceless. So congratulations to you on that. So our middles were very dominant, and they did get a lot of kills. But our top blocker award goes to our outside hitter, Maisie. She, as I said, got the Hustle and Heart Award, too, and she was a captain. And I wanted to just say something about her. We had a tournament, the first tournament, and they won every set. And the team we were playing that could be, could give them maybe a little run of their money was actually doing okay. Until Maisie came over on this girl that actually could attack, you know, when you're at that age, it's kind of hit or miss sometimes on where the girls are at. Well, this girl went up and she was going to kill it. And Maisie just went up and roofed her so bad 
the sound stopped the gym. Everybody turned and they were like, what was that? After that, I think that team scored two points. They were just devastated. And she just was lurking that net the whole time. And after that, she was on the net, you know, glued to it for the rest of the season. So that's why she was given the top blocker award. Now this brings us to our gold ball MVP, okay? As the girls know, we get that ball and coaches and I talk after tournaments and decide who's going to sign it as outstanding player. And this year, that is going to Rory, okay? Rory really deserves this. And I don't really know what else I can say about this young lady. I've been coaching her for several years and she plays with such a fierce attitude if you watch. And the thing I really love is what Rory will do is she will get something and she's like, she loves it and she'll go, yeah, this little fist pump she does. And it is just so cute. And I'm really honored to give her the gold ball. Coach Dave again, this uh, with the team, 14's team. Uh, what a season we had, I got to tell you. As a coach, I felt like a kid in a candy store with this team. And because such, I really overloaded this team. I pushed them. <laughs> Did I push them? Just a little. A little bit. I pushed them way out of their comfort zone and just loaded so much on them so that at the first tournament, we made three offensive changes, ran three offensive sets just to get through that tournament. And they still almost got into the top two. They would just lose just by a couple of points every time. It was great. But I did kind of uh, get into it a, uh, a little deep. And Coach and I talked after that, and we realized need to take a step back and so I did I started to simplify everything so that by the time crossroads came we really believed that we had something going and I've got to tell you if I didn't have this guy right here coach James by my side I might have had to be put in an institution because when crossroads came that is Kind of the story of our season. <laughs> yeah. um, and I am going to tell the story because it is uh, something I've never experienced in my life. And you interject at any time, sir. We go to Crossroads. We get to the gym Friday night. We're feeling pretty darn good about our girls. And they're really running the 5-1 well. Well, we get there and not... 10 minutes into scrimmaging the 15s, Greta, our setter, goes down and sprains her shoulder. She's out for the tournament. So I decide what any coach coaching a 14s team would do. He would take his 11-year-old libero and make her setter. It worked. And that young lady really stepped up and was exhausted every day. So we got through that practice. We come back the next day. I walk into the gym. I see Coach James. Girls come around the corner. Coach, coach, coach. I'm like, yeah? Emma, Emma's hurt. I'm like, what? We haven't even stepped onto a court. Well, she comes around the corner. She's like this. I'm like, what happened? Well, she'd used one of those attacking machines they had and pinched a nerve or something. So ironically and fortuitously, the triage tent was right next to our court. So she went in there and started getting work done. So at this point, I'm now down to seven players from the nine. So we start playing. And I have made another adjustment. Into the first match, we get to the second set. And my middle, Lily, sprains her ankle. She's out the rest of the tournament. 
That's three now if you're counting. Okay. That's three. So down to six players. I put poor, poor Morgan in middle. And so she's not in middle, but I put her in there. It's like, I don't have a choice. She's the only one sitting there. She went in and we got through that. We get to the next match and Emma's feeling better. So she comes back. I'm like, sweet, I'm back to seven players. We get in and the second set of that match, Ellie, I thought she broke her ankle, but she just sprained her ankle and they hauled her off on a wheelchair. So I was in the, yeah, I, I was at the end of the bench, kind of like trying not to bawl like a baby. But I'll tell you what, those girls dug deeper and they fought every day. Six players playing against some of the best teams in the country and I could not be prouder and it's a story they will regale their kids with and any teams they ever coach because it was phenomenal. Likewise and I feel the same. I mean I've coached a few teams, I've been in a few situations but I have never been on a team where we had four girls injured and the rest of those kids they stayed in it and they stayed engaged. I know a lot of kids would have just went ahead and threw one in the towel and said, do we have to? And these girls stayed engaged. They wanted to finish. They wanted to play. And I was really proud of them as well. Yeah. And honestly, I've never coached that hard in my life <laughs> because they were playing things they'd never done at a level that, wow. So, yeah, they dug incredibly deep. So. And we were in USA at Crossroads. Yes. I know. So that was already our, uh, we already had a difficult path and then they, they, they just didn't shy away from the challenge one bit. Yep. Super proud of those girls. So let's get on to our awards. Now every team has a team mom. We happen to have three, but the one that got the votes from their team was Morgan. And I can tell you, Morgan truly cares about her teammates. If you ever met her and talked to her, She's like one of the sweetest young ladies you could ever meet. With that comes my desire to get Morgan to be more aggressive. So while she's a team mom, we also wanted her to get more aggressive and she really did that. And she really improved a dramatic level this year. Now, I also have quite a few jokesters on my team and for two years in a row, it's Ellie. And she is the funniest for sure. And I've been fortunate to have her on the team because having her on the team last year um, and being such a comic and working so hard really enabled her to help her teammates flat out. I mean, she just really uh, she also got some votes as a team mom, if you can you can understand that. But she really brought goofiness and fun to a hard working environment because we pushed these girls ridiculously hard. You all know all the players improved quite a bit and we pushed them out of their comfort zone a lot. The most improved player award goes to Rhiannon. Now, I'm going to get emotional. I started coaching Re when she was in third grade, and she's going to start high school this year. And when she started playing club this year, she actually surpassed my daughter for the person I've coached longer than any other player. And this kid has played well over 100 matches for me. And to say she has improved is an understatement. And I am so honored that her teammates recognized that and gave her that award. She really deserved it. I couldn't agree more. Hustle and Heart Award is going to a lady who's been with me for just two years, and that's Miss Ellie. Or as the girls called her, Hippo D. Not only was she hilarious, but she worked her tail off at every practice. And that translated to her teammates working just as hard. And I gotta tell you, 
That's why they probably named her one of their captains. Now, we were blessed with another really strong set of servers. Really had a lot of good servers. The team picked probably the girl who got the most aces on the team, and that is Emma. If you ever had to receive a serve from Emma, you would understand why she got so many aces. It's almost difficult not to move out of the way. That thing is moving. And I gotta tell you, she works at keeping it up. I, I Sometimes I'd be like, you, you might wanna ease up a little. Every serve, she's gonna kill every serve as hard as she can. Ignore coach, I'm gonna kill him. Why, because I'm gonna get the ace. And she would do that, and uh, she's gonna go a long way. Now, our top setter award goes to Greta. Now, we started out with four offenses. I had four offenses for these girls. I said I overdid it. Yeah, four separate rotations. <laughs> but Greta, we finally settled, and she really got the offense down. And she worked so hard. It was so devastating when she sprained her shoulder. I just, I mean, I, I felt so bad for those girls. It just was the worst. But I can tell you, she's going to go into high school next year really prepared. And Lakewood's going to be darn lucky to get this kid. I mean, really. Kind of a little not happy she's not going to A West. But yeah, it'll all work out. Yeah, yeah. On to our best hitter. If you ever came to any of our matches, you would see we did things a bit different. I would venture we had more back row attacks yeah. than any other team. And with that, the team voted Gabby our top attacker. She would just jump up and just take exactly what she's doing her jump serve and just nail it right down the pipe. It was really awesome. And I just thought that was funny as we kind of went through our offense. It just, I was like, I throw my hands up. We are now a back row attacking team. I mean, Taylor got a lot of uh, attacks, but boy, that back row really lit it up. Our best blocker, well, that's easy. That's Taylor, okay? Or as the girls called her, little T. Now, that's ironic because she's six feet one, all right? Taylor's been playing for me for two years and in a couple leagues, she's probably played close to 60 matches for me. And what I love about her is every single match and every single practice, her confidence improves, her serving improves. And I'm telling you, her blocking footwork was phenomenal. She really knew how to group, close the gap and go up and really got great at reading the shoulder. So fantastic job. Our dynamic defender is a young lady that probably puts in more court time than any player I've ever coached. This is a kid who probably practices a minimum of 30 hours a week, and I'm not kidding. I know because she just did a six-hour session yesterday. I mean, that's why she's ranked the number one doubles player in the country for 12 and unders, because she puts that work. Dakota, or as I call her, Dimples, improved so much at reading angles, and I will give a ton of that credit to my assistant, Coach James. He was fantastic in teaching our back row players how to read angles and worked a phenomenal job with our setters as well. As I said, I couldn't do any of this without him. And Dakota came on like spitfire. Add that, she then jumped in and set for an entire tournament at the drop of a hat. And not only did that, probably jump set over half of those sets. I mean, she is pretty impressive. So she got that. Uh, dynamic defender and this brings us to our final award the 14's MVP gold ball okay the first practice James and I had 
I will tell you what happened. This young lady started practice and I heard her voice. And the second I say that, every player on the team knows that the ball is going to Lily. The number one thing you have to have is communication on the volleyball court. And as I said, I've coached over a thousand kids and she is without a doubt, one if, if not the best communicator I have ever had. And I told the girls, be like Lily. You have to communicate. And she's going to be signing this ball every tournament yep. because of that. Remember that yeah, talk? I'm telling you, it was impressive. And I'm really honored that she's going to get this. And I can't wait to go deliver it to you. Hey, girls. Uh, Coach Rachel and Coach Megan couldn't be here. And Coach Rachel sent me a note she wanted me to read to you guys. She was really proud of all of you girls, and you improved so much and meshed so well as a team. I couldn't agree more. It was amazing to watch you grow together and strive to be better every practice and every new match during tournaments as well. I feel so privileged to have gotten to assist in coaching for this team this season. And you know what? Coach Rachel played for me at the Y when she was in sixth grade. So it shows you what a small fraternity sorority we have. Hi guys, Coach Kyle. I started to yell there, sorry. Anyway, we're gonna start with the awards just to get that out of the way and then have a little bit of a chat. The first award is for the Dynamic Defender. That goes to Bella because Bella, well, everyone knows Bella. She just, she's everywhere. She's supposed to be almost 100% of the time. So her with defense, with offense, she, she could just play the whole court and she does a great job. The next award is best blocker. I'm giving that one to Becca. Becca started this season off, well, with a broken ankle and she had some trials and things going on during the season and everything, but she, she fought back and she really showed up for quite a few tournaments and did a heck of a good job whenever she is playing front, middle, or outside. So, Becca, she's our best blocker. For the best hitter, everyone knows it's Haley. Haley finally learned how to raise her elbow and swing at the volleyball and whenever she would do it consistently, no one could stop her. She, she could just crush the ball and that, that was incredible to, to watch. It was just a, a lot of fun. After that we have the best setter. Well, yeah, a lot of us run the 5-1 and Emily, it's definitely you. Emily's got probably the best hands I've ever seen. She needs to work a little bit on placement of the ball, but she's, her hands, her getting herself to the volleyball has really, really just, she's just done a great job. And Emily, I feel has, she has been the one kid that I picked on most throughout the season. Just, and I, I don't wanna say picked on, but I was, I, I gave her a lot of grief during tournaments in the middle of sets, in the middle, middle of points, just talking to her constantly, working with her. And she could just, she'd just look at me and smile and let me know, I got this, I got this. And she, she did a great job. After that, we have best server. We won our, the one tournament that we won, we won because of our server. Cielo, not only a, a really good defensive player in the back, she destroyed a team that had destroyed us a few weeks earlier and basically won the uh, tournament that they were in and they just beat the crud out of us. Uh, Cielo got in there and she just shut them down. She, she made the players just, 
she turned them to mush, basically. She got so deep into their heads, they, they just couldn't do anything. Really good players could not pass the ball because they were so frustrated with the way Ciela was serving. So it, it goes without saying that she's got the best serve. She's, I, I didn't want to go up against her with that serve. It was, it was ferocious. Most improved player, that goes to Kylie. She came on the team as a uh, practice player and she was with us when we won the tournament and I think that was a really big uplifting moment for her and the team. It was it was nice. But Kylie, she she came on really not with a lot of volleyball on on the back in her background and never stopped asking questions. What do I do to do this? How can I get better doing this? Never stopped. And Along with asking the questions, I could see her apply herself and really work hard at achieving what she was asking. So I give her the most improved player. And she still needs to raise her elbow when she's hitting because she drops it. And yeah, you know what I'm talking about. And I came up my, with my own award for up and comers. And the reason I say up and comers, Vanessa is new to the sport. She, again, was a uh, practice player, but she's one heck of an athlete. And when she'd get in trouble, not quite knowing what to do on the court as a technician, she could take over as being a really good athlete and make the play and make it happen. So as far as an up and comer goes, she's she's got it hands down. It's. I think she'll be a joy for Lakewood and it'll just be fun watching her. And the next one is Jensen. The reason Jensen is an up and comer is because she's just going into high school now. She is 13 on my 15s team. And I think she's starting to develop her confidence. And once she does that, she has all the tools that are needed to really make her a super good ball player. So the up and comers all figured out a nice little award to get to you guys, but you did great. And for my most valuable player, that goes to Mia. Mia was able to develop into a really good libero. And she, again, she, she's one of those athletes that asks every second, what can I do to make myself better? How can I get better? And the coach loves that, especially when they apply what they're asking. It's, it's really nice. But she's always, she improved, she got better at reading hitters, and I think she's gonna be a force when she gets into high school. Again, she's one of our, my 13-year-olds as well, and she'll just be going into high school this up and coming year. Hopefully you guys will get a play. And that concludes our awards. I had said the last award was, and I was wrong, the last award is Hustle and Heart. It goes to Alexis. And it's, Alexis is not the fastest on the court. She doesn't move the quickest. It's, it's, it's the heart that brings the hustle, it makes the team hustle. It, it, it just, she is a person who the team really looks up to, one of the team captains along with Mia. And well, she just gets that because she's, she had the heart of the team basically and the team went where she went. So and one last thing I wanted to mention Linda she has moved to the, the uh, yeah, Minnesota. And Minnesota is not a great place right now, so I hope she's doing all right. But she says hi to everybody and misses y'all and wishes we could have had finished the tournament, tournament as well. Real quick, you guys know I talk and talk and talk and talk. But we, the 15s was a first time team together. Some of you had played together before and all that good stuff, but we had, I think, really two true 15s. Then we had 14s and we had 13s. And I honestly believe if we would have been able to have that last month for practice, 
I think that final powers would have been a really fun tournament to go to. It, it breaks my heart that you guys had to miss that. It does, I am happy that you get, did get, a, get to experience Crossroads, but there's something I did mention the first day that we went down to Crossroads, that you only get about four chances to play there. Yeah, it's four, four years through high school. And as you notice, some of CORE's teams did not get to do Crossroads this year, and that is truly sad. So coming up next year, if they have Crossroads, if you guys are playing, you got to play like you know how to play. You've got to play with the heart that you say you want to have. It's, you're good enough to be a really, really good group of girls and I'm looking forward to seeing it. So be strong, be tough, and play hard. Thanks. Hi, I'm Brianna Smith. I'm the coach for 16 Red. Uh, today I wanted to actually talk first about the awards for our team, and then I'll follow up uh, talking a little bit about our team and giving an overview of the season. Uh, so first I wanted to talk about our MVP award. That goes to Delaney Neville. Uh, she gets this award t uh, today because of her fire, desire, and how she's contagious on the court. Uh, when, when she had her spunk, many of the team members on her team followed behind her and had that same attitude. I really loved her desire and willingness to be open to do different things on the court. We asked a lot of her to be flexible this season and playing multiple positions depending upon the, the need of the team on that day and that tournament and she was always willing to do that. I can also say that she certainly had a lot of desire going through things working very hard in the season and had some floor burns that never healed as well as some pretty bad bru bruises from crashing throughout the season out of bounds. Um, probably one of the biggest memories of, of the season was in a power when he played outside of Greeley and she went running to save a ball. She saved it and tripped on our equipment and flew outside of the court and bruised her knees pretty badly, made the ball over. We won the point. She is still sitting there and then she got up and played through the rest of the day. So it, as, as a person that's a leader, she was also one of our captains on our team. And again, that desire and fire on the court is really what was helpful for her as a captain and really helped her in leading her team accordingly. In addition to that, she really is quite funny and li likes to do lots of jokes on the sidelines. So that, that uh, ten tenacity as well as funness really was a spark plug for our team. The next award that I'd like to go through is our most improved player, and that goes to Briar Hamp. Um, at the very beginning of the season, uh, she really was in an area that she was learning to gain more confidence on the court. She really was a very consistent role player at the beginning of the season, but as the season progressed, she really wanted to learn and grow as, as a player and took any of the feedback that myself and teammates gave her and applied that on the court. Because of that, she really has improved a ton, and she went from someone that was being very quiet and uh, a, a place where she actually really wanted to work hard and take anything that she could to improve. Uh, as the season progressed, she went from someone that was quiet to someone that had a lot of swagger on the court, and towards the end of the season, you could really see that confidence going through and that she really felt that she had the ability to do anything. It's kind of unfortunate our season was cut short because I really think that we really would have seen a lot of that tenacity coming out and confidence in the latter part of the season. I can't wait for that to see what she does next because I can really can see she's going to take that confidence on the court into high school volleyball but also as well in the classroom and in other areas. Our next award is the Hustle and Heart Award and that goes to Kate Stutzman. Uh, really, I just really appreciate how much heart she has in the game and she perseveres in anything that she is asked to do on the court. She has such a kind-hearted soul and you can really see that on the court and her teammates see that as well. Consistently, you could always hear her talking to her teammates and cheering them on on the court, giving them feedback, really trying to help them in any way that she could as well as off the court. In addition to that, uh, she really is a player that will jump in and do anything that anyone asks her to do as a coach or otherwise, and that's something that's very appreciated. Uh, one of my favorite memories for the season of her is in one of our tournaments, she played four different positions in one day and did, did so exceptionally well. So she's, she can step in and do anything that she's asked. 
And in addition to that, I just really appreciate her being a focal point for our team. She really was someone that could bring things out of her teammates and bring the best of them and really get them back to a level set as need be. Our next award is the Best Server Award, and that goes to Hanfei Li. Uh, Hanfei is an awesome server. Um, as I'm sure some of the other coaches talk about, uh, gals on their own team, um, Hanfei is, is like that as well, that she's very, very consistent on the, on the court from a serving perspective and can serve any position that you ask her. Uh, at the very beginning of the season, she had a streak where she served more than 50 serves in a row over a series of three tournaments before she missed her first serve. So it was pretty amazing that, I mean, she's just very much go-to. Also, it was great to always see how she could make the other team very frustrated because, again, she can serve anywhere you want her to. So she would pick on the setter transitioning and they try to adjust for that. Then she'd serve really short, they try to adjust for that. They move short, then she'd serve it deep and they couldn't get that. Then she'd serve it really hard, then she'd serve it soft. So no matter what she did, she was very effective. Although Hanfei wasn't a captain, she was someone that we really called upon for her quiet leadership. She was great in, in, in getting uh, the girls, uh, when, when we had frustrating times, to really talk, talk and just bring them back and say, it's all right, we'll get the next one. And everyone really just appreciated her calm demeanor. Uh, in addition to that, I really think that she is going to continue to take the, the, the growth that she had in the season beyond uh, setting. She really, really improved on her defense this year. She became a much better passer and hitter as well. Uh, she always uh, surprised her teammates in some of the kills when she had opportunities to hit. So I can't wait to see what she does next as well. Uh, moving forward, our next award was for the best setter, and that goes to Shay Arnold. Uh, Shay is also one of our captains in addition to Delaney. And although she's a very great leader, in addition to that, she's a really good uh, tactician as well. Um, she did this both on and off the court. She would always give uh, suggestions and, and hints to her teammates and also be the pulse of the team. And I could talk to her and say, hey, I'm seeing this on the court. What are you seeing? What do you think would work? What do you think would not? And she was really good to be an, an, another person on the court to talk to. She always really demonstrated a willingness to work with others as well, too, and that was one of the reasons why I think she was our best setter. I mean, she really improved her hand skills over the season. She has amazingly soft hands, but she worked very, very hard in trying to work through and connecting with each hitter and trying to find ways that would be effective for sets for each one of her teammates that she set. And she consistently worked in practice to improve her quick sets as well as working on her hitting as well. I love her quiet competitiveness on the court, and she takes that into anything that she does, so I really look forward to seeing what's next for her as well. Moving forward, our best blocker was Jayla Johnston. Uh, Jayla really had a challenge on our team as far as she was the youngest player on our team and played up a couple uh, age levels, and she just did phenomenal for her age. And she knocked the challenges out of the park. So she was really asked to do a lot, not only physically, but mentally, as well as from a maturity level perspective. And she met these challenges head on and really worked well with the teammates. I loved really how, how she progressed through the season and really improved in areas, uh, on the areas of the mental aspects of the game. So when she received feedback from the coaching staff as well as teammates, she really looked to implement that on the court. And I really uh, love to see what she's going to be doing next as well. The reason why she was giving the best blocker uh, uh, award on our team is she just has a uh, phenomenal court vision. She really can see where the ball's going on the court and she's played both middle blocker as well as outside hitter on our team. And, was great at shutting down their strongest hitter and she would do so and they would get frustrated because she would do it not only once, she would do it over and over again. So I can't wait to see what she'll be doing as she moves forward again. As she grows, she's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Next, uh, our Dynamic Defender Award goes to Angelina. Angelina liked to give her the nickname of Flash because all of a sudden you don't think someone's there and there she is. She just amazingly sees the ball wherever it is. and. She just has such heart and will go after everything on the court. If it's anywhere near her range, she will go after everything. And she just goes out at it with a passion. She certainly, uh, you can see the bruises from it too. So she had to work through a pretty bad bone bruise for part of the season from diving so much and continue to always just play fierce, with a fierceness that you wouldn't believe. In addition to that, she's always willing to play any defensive position and when given the opportunity, the position to hit as well and does great at it as well too. 
I really love her de determination and I look, wait, can't wait to see what she does next, uh, next year as well. Our last award is our Best Hitter Award, and that goes to Izzy. Um, Izzy, again, is a player that has a, a lot of determination on the court and has a no-fear attitude. Uh, she was always willing to step up to do any challenges that were asked of her and any hits on offense. So she was one of our go-to hitters that would always be willing to hit uh, any of the quick sets that you want her to. And in addition to that, she would uh, shut down the, the other team's uh, great hitters as well. Uh, this determination was really contagious as well too. I mean, she just plays with the fire and when she gets excited, everyone gets excited around her too. I love her work ethic and her never give up attitude and I really think she's going to do great things as well. And I was very blessed to be the 16's red coach. I learned a lot from them and I hope they learned uh, some from me in the process as well. I really think we had a, a year where we showed great work ethic. We had a lot of potential, and much of this potential showed off uh, in some of our tournaments throughout the season. We really had some good finishes in the RMR showdown, finishing in the higher bracket, as well as uh, we did uh, finish first in one of our powers. I really think probably maybe some of the other Coaches may say this as well too. I would have loved to have see, seen where the season finished if we had had that opportunity because I really think we were starting to, to click not only on a mental perspective but as a team as well. And I think that we would have shown uh, that success in Crossroads and other, other uh, powers following that. Uh, and for the players on the team, I know these times are really challenging for you and there are a lot of unknowns that you're going through as young individuals. And just simply know that you all are such great kids and have such heart and work hard and have such a work ethic and are all adaptable and you really have shown this on the court. And I think that you will overcome anything that you're going through at this time and shine as it moves forward. Uh, for some of the other team members that I uh, didn't get a chance to talk about in the team awards, I just want to take a quick moment to thank them for their efforts this season and call out, out some of their uh, great assets on the team as well. Uh, Ella, I'd like to talk about her being the glue on the team on the court. She played opposite on her team as well as playing defensive specialist. And she was one that really made the most of every opportunity she had on the court and really try to make that time shine. I know it's hard playing as an opposite coming in and having to set as need be if the setter can't get there as well as hitting. And she did so coming off the bench cold and always did so very well. I really loved your enthusiasm and spirit on the bench. Uh, your teammates could certainly see that and uh, your, your fireness on the, on the bench and, and yelling for them while on the bench as well as on the court, you can really see that. And I think you really brought positivity to our team. Autumn, who was one of our practice players, uh, she has an amazing heart and work ethic. And as her coach, I really appreciated her demeanor and focus in each and every practice that she came to. You could tell she wanted to make the most of every time that she was on the court and that she set foot in the gym, whether it was in practice or the opportunities that she had to play in some tournaments. And she really used those opportunities to grow and make herself better, as well as trying to make her teammates better too in working on things that we need to. Uh, Raya, I love your spirit as well, and I know uh, you really make uh, those on your team smile. You always are having a joke to say, and your positivity is great. I know that you really had some struggles going through the season because you had some pretty uh, severe back injuries that you were working through, but you really persevered and came to help support your teammates no matter what, and your grit is going to help you do well no matter what you do. Lastly, Wyatt, I love your desire um, as, as, a, as a player and as a, a teammate on our team. Um, you have maturity like Jayla beyond your years and I just love your work ethic and I really think that that work ethic and always trying to improve your craft on the court as well as in the classroom is going to make you successful. Uh, just as a last follow-up, I really love coaching all of you. You were a joy to coach and thank you for the opportunity to coach you and good luck in the upcoming school year. Uh, I'm Emily Booth and I am the coach for the 16 Blue team. Um, I was not the original coach, but uh, these girls really brought me in and made me feel like I was at home and I might as well start off with my captains who made it all really worth it. 
Um, so Victoria, P. Willie, and Fish. Okay, so Fish is Amber, P. Willie is Paige, and Victoria is Victoria. These kids really helped me gel with this team really well and just gave me the confidence to be that really good, inspiring, and also harder coach that I don't think a lot of kids have got before. Um, I'm extremely competitive and I definitely let them feel that whenever I played with them or even just being on the sidelines. They, they knew I wanted to win more than they did. More than they did, of course. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and start off with our gold ball MVP and that is going to be Fish. Uh, I had three kids who all had ties between their names being on this ball. We didn't get a lot of play and a lot of power in, so I guess um, a lot of the same kids got, got their names on it. <laughs> but um, I really just had to go in and look at each personality, each attitude, and I, I came out with Fish being my MVP, so good job. Um, on to Dynamic Defender, we also have Fish. Uh, she was my libero for the entirety of the season, and she could not have impressed me more. Uh, she earned her nickname as Fish from flopping and getting to everything that she possibly could have or even that she couldn't have got to, but still did. Um, she definitely was a little embodiment, I think, of me at her age. And I really loved seeing her play and being able to make her better than she was when I first saw her. So once again, good job. Um, next we have best blocker. And best blocker goes to Jessie. Wow. Uh, the kid can jump when she wants to. <laughs> She can get a hand on anything, uh, whether it's running and being a flying cucumber, as a high school coach once told me, um, across the net, or just she could get to anything and just put a little bit of a stop on it. She she only got a few solo blocks or you know stuffs, but I think that her effort towards blocking and wanting to get up as high as she could every single time really really set her apart from my other blockers. So good job, Jesse. Next we have best hitter, and that was Gwen. Gwen was so resilient with her hitting. She started off as a middle, and through tribunes and trials, we, we went to outside, just knowing that her power was a little better there. And she, she could make the ball hit the floor from anywhere. I, I didn't even matter. It didn't even matter where we put her, honestly. She could have hit and scored points from us from any single point of the, of the court. So good job, Gwen. You're amazing. <laughs> um, but I do have an honorable mention for best hitter, and that is Fish. When she had to play outside for us, um, when out of power we had six kids. So that was interesting, and she tried real hard, and I was proud no matter what she did. Um, next up, we have best setter and best server, both going to Victoria. Uh, Victoria was our setter who put in so much work throughout the summer before, and the entire season that I was with her, she put in so much work to become faster smarter and have cleaner hands and be able to jump set and dump. She was a blast to work with to learn, actually teach someone how to be a setter and be a phenomenal setter at that. So great job, Victoria. Uh, next we have Hustle and Heart. And this one really holds like a, a good little place in my heart, honestly. Um, this is for Delaney. Delaney got 4,000 times better through just the short span that I had her and I've never been more proud of a kid I've coached. This may have been you know my first team actually being a head coach but I've, I've had had my fair share and I have never felt more proud or just just happy for a kid to get better and genuinely love what they do every single second they're on the court or even off the court just being around a volleyball just talking about volleyball watching it she was 
absorbing everything like a sponge. And I, ah, she's so good. Love that kid. Great job, Delaney. Uh, next we have most improved, and this is Emma. Emma came in not having a lot of background in volleyball, but had a mom who played volleyball, so she knew what was up. And she got so much better and really just tried hard every practice to get better with serving and hitting. She learned how to actually take an approach, which was cool. Um, could get her serve over and decently far in, which was another super cool thing that I was so happy about. And I really wish that she could have been able to join us for a power or two because um, I feel like she would have made a difference. And I just can't wait to see what she comes up with for the next seasons and how much better she gets. So good job. <laughs> good job, Emma. Um, an honorable mention for Most Improved is also Delaney. Because like I said with her award, she got phenomenally better. Just so much heart went into trying to get every single pass perfect or every hit to exactly where I needed her to go or actually working on spot serving. She, she did it all and she tried absolutely her hardest every time she tried. So next we have some of our silly kind of awards that I wanted to come up with because I had probably the silliest team in the club. So first one is best whoa. All right, the whoa is a dance move. And P. Willie could do it better than anybody else on the planet, I think. She'd make it funny, she'd make it exaggerated, or even maybe doing a little baby one. And it would just bring the team together, give everybody a big old smile, and kind of just lost some tension because she would mostly do it in not so happy moments or moments that coach was not so happy. Um, so, P. Willie. <laughs> uh, this is best dive and it goes to Izzy. That kid could dive probably on any surface and make it look beautiful. She dove like the boys do, you know, like the that. Yeah, she's amazing at it. And, you know, props to whoever taught her how to do that so perfectly because she could dig any ball with that dive as well. So good job. Uh, weirdest serve goes to Jessie because apparently Coach, Coach Garcia at Columbine taught her to serve with her fingers like this. Don't understand it, but it worked, I guess, because she made quite a few points off of serve. I had probably one of the highest ace averages um, on the team. So, you know what? Maybe I'll try this at some point. Good job, Jesse. Way to be weird. <laughs> um, next one up is uh, best comments about my setting. Goes to Martha. She never held back. <laughs> there was always something hilarious to say. Even when, you know, I thought I had a good set. She's like, Okay, coach, maybe maybe a little different next time. But I always appreciated her, co her comments because they always made me laugh and made practice that much more fun. Uh, next up is funniest pictures, and that goes to Fish and Jesse because I, I have some interesting ones <laughs> of them on tournament day or just at practice getting like all their stuff off and just being comfy and weird and just so unique is a good word to describe them when they're on camera is unique. They're not scared of anyone, of what anybody thinks. And I give them some major credit for that because I got some ugly ones of them. <laughs> Next one is most questions asked is definitely Delaney and Gabby. Wouldn't even get through half of the uh, drill and they'd be like already having 400 questions to ask me about why we're doing it or how we're doing it or anything you could probably come up with and I honestly loved it they wanted to know the in and out and make sure that they could beat anybody at the drill or get the most out of the drill at any time maybe just wish they would wait for questions until the end that's fine though 
Uh, last but not least, I have Funniest Kid. And I feel like this one's a little self-explanatory because she could make any person laugh, whether it's the meanest ref in the room or a random kid who is not having a good day. P. Willie could make anybody laugh, cry, do anything hilarious. She just had the best jokes, the best dance moves, like just, she's a crazy kid and I hope she never changes. And on that note, good job to my 16 blue team. Peace out. Um, so back onto the 17s team, I just wanna take my shot, I guess, for the awards. So I, and we had such a great group of parents and kids this year, and I couldn't do what I do without everyone's support. Um, our parents that have been with us a while are always, always supportive of CORE, and they do everything they can to help us be successful. They make sure I eat. Um, they make sure I sit down. <laughs> the kids even started making sure I was taking care of myself because I tend not to do that on tournament days. Uh, super patient when we found out I had cataracts and was blind. So kudos to Sage and Liz for stepping up and actually officiating for me this year because I couldn't actually see the line if it was in or out. Um, but we wouldn't be successful without the support of our parents. Um, the team this year, they came out of high school, a lot of them feeling really defeated and had kind of lost their passion and they weren't sure if they even wanted to play anymore. And I feel like we spent a lot of the first part of the season just trying to help them get back to doing what they love to do and remind them that they're here to have fun and that competing is fun and as soon as they kind of got into the groove and this turned out to be the most amazing and fun team that I've ever coached and I'm on year 18. The team this year was led by their captains Elisa and Sage and this was their third year being voted captains together and Every year, I hear the same things over and over again about these two ladies, and they truly are 100% what CORE is, all the way down into their heart. They will push not only themselves, they will push them teammates, they encourage the parents to have fun. They're the most phenomenal captains that you could ask for on a team. We had some definite ups and downs this season um, as far as getting all of these very passionate kids to play together. Um, and I was really super thankful for our DU consultants that kind of helped guide them into what turned out to be an amazing season because they could overcome any obstacle that they faced. Because they worked so hard, they accomplished some amazing things on the court this year and did some things that have never even been done at CORE before. Granted, we haven't been around that long, but huge accomplishments. Um, power one is the only power where they didn't place first this year. They placed third, and I think the only reason that happened is because we just spent a month and a half practicing and getting everyone used to positions, and all of a sudden, the morning of the tournament, we had sick kids and we changed it, the whole game plan. Um, but they still, took third place that day um, and it was amazing. At Greeley, they were the first team ever in core history to make a gold bracket at a multi-day tournament and we were the only team to take a game off of the team that ended up taking first overall. Uh, we placed ninth at that tournament. The Colorado Classic was another one where we moved up and we were in Division 2 at the Colorado Classic and our team went completely undefeated at that tournament um, and it was just kind of the turning point for us. I'm super bummed that we didn't get to finish the season out because I think these kids just hit their peak. They just hit their stride. And um, especially going into finding out they moved up in the RMR to Division I uh, for 17s. Crossroads was going to be a huge deal for us. Um, the other powers were going to be a huge deal for us. The Durango tournament was going to be amazing, I'm sure. Um, so I'm super bummed that they didn't get the opportunity to finish their season. Um, but I'm really looking forward to either hopefully seeing them play at high school, we hope, um, 
or having them back to, to finish the right way and, and go out and finish what they started. Uh, so with that, I want to get on to our actual season awards and um, share some amazing things about these kids. Um, so this year, our best hitter award, um, it goes to Elisa. And the reason for that, actually, I do want to back up for a second and just say that this year was a little different because normally the kids vote on all of these things. And since we couldn't really do that logistically, um, there was a lot of conversation and a lot of serious thought into how we wanted to manage these awards. So, um, yeah, I wish the kids could have still had a say in it, but I feel pretty confident that we, we did right by them. Um, so this year, our Best Hitter Award goes to Elisa. Um, and followed by that, she also gets our Best Blocker Award. Elisa is something special. I've coached her for a long time. And every year it gets better. And it, it, it's last year I reached a point where I was like, okay, I think we finally like we're there and she's going to go off and do amazing things. And this year she came back on the court with a vengeance and she is five, eight and she is a middle and she is being looked at by colleges as a five, eight middle. And so that if there's any testament to what we do here at core, this child embodies what we do here. I don't care about size. It's about your passion and your commitment and your drive and going out there and being a beast at what you do. And Elisa uh, did just that this year. Our best setter, which seems like a kind of silly award since we only had one. Um, but I feel like the setters don't always get a lot of recognition. They get blamed a lot. Um, so that's why this, this award's important to me. And we put a lot of pressure on our setter this year. Um, Sage obviously is who gets this award and it is well earned um, this year out of any year that she's been here at core she demonstrated just the pure desire to be everything she could possibly be for her team and worked her tail off and made sure that those balls were where the where her teammates needed them so that they could execute um, our best server this year goes to liz liz is just a monster on the service line. Like there's no way to say that. Mike could stand back there and give her a zone or her teammates can give her a zone and she will hit it 10 out of 10 times. It's, it's a phenomenal tool to have. Um, her teammates never worried when she stepped back to the service line. Um, they all wish she could be back there at certain times. I do wanna give a little side shout out though to Crystal um, on the service line because twice during the season she brought us back to win games that we should have by all rights lost um, just because she served the other team off the court when we needed it most. Our most improved award this year goes to Amanda and Amanda gets this award because she not only improved physically and skill wise but the most important thing and the hugest hugest that was great grammar the biggest <laughs> change that we saw in Amanda was her attitude. Um, she stepped into the season, and I'm gonna kind of put her on blast for a second, um, and told us she had a problem at high school because she didn't think she got to play as much as she should. And she had to fight for her playtime here this year. And she fought. And not only did she fight hard enough to play outside, she fought hard enough to go play a second position and be a secondary right side for us. She was grateful for every second she got on the court. And when she wasn't on the court, she was on the sideline cheering everybody on. Um, and that's a huge step. Um, in our DU sports psychology sessions, she was always interacting with everyone um, and providing feedback and then taking that feedback that she would get and just really applying it. And so we're super, super proud of you, Amanda. Um, awesome job. Our Dynamic Defender Award this year goes to Sierra. Um, Sierra is five foot tall and just plays like she's six foot tall and she flies all over the court and is just absolutely amazing. I'm not ever worried about a ball dropping as long as she's on the court. Um, and she also gets our play of the year award. So at our last power where we actually won to go into division one, 
we were having a little bit of a rough patch and Sierra has never, throughout the whole season, never played front row. We practiced front row, she never played front row. And I looked down the bench and decided to keep Sierra on the court instead of rotating her out. And two plays later, she blocked the other teams outside. <laughs> and I think not only were we ecstatic and jumping up and down, it, the other team was just in shock that this little itty bitty person just shut down there outside. And um, that was a huge turning point for us in that game and we won. So super awesome. And there's highlights on our YouTube channel of that, by the way. Um, following that line of things, um, we have what's called a Hustle and Heart Award. And Crystal gets that award this year. Uh, Crystal was our libero and she just busts her butt every second she's on the court. I rarely heard her ever complain about anything. She always wanted to know what can I do better? What can, how can I help the team? What do we need to do? Um, and she would give 110% of herself on the court. Um, I would never, ever, ever doubt her passion and her desire to be successful. And that rubbed off on her teammates in a big, huge, serious way. So Crystal, awesome job. Um, we also have a special award this year that I'm calling the Game Changer Award. And we've given this out in the past and it kind of usually goes along the lines of an MVP award. Um, same concept. Perhaps there were some things slightly different between this person and the person that got our MVP award this year, but um, I'm giving a Game Changer Award to Sydney. And Sydney gets this award because when Sydney had a game face on, the game changed. As a freshman, she could step on that court and physically and mentally lead her team. And when Sydney was on, there was no stopping Sydney. Um, she worked extremely hard in practice and got extremely good at being able to hit line shots um, as an outside, both cross body and actually turning, which if you're not into volleyball, you don't probably get that. But um, it's, it's difficult. And for a freshman to come in, and that was like her big goal is she wanted to not just hit the ball, she wanted to have purpose and she wanted to be stronger and she wanted to be faster and she wanted to jump higher. And she did all of those things. And um, when Sydney was on the court, I was not ever worried that, that we weren't gonna get to a ball or that ball wasn't gonna get over the net. Um, really, game changer is the most appropriate thing that I can say, so awesome job, Sid. Um, our most valuable player award, they get this nice fancy ball. And uh, this one was hard because there's a tie and I had to count all those signatures just like all the other coaches did. <laughs> And we actually had a tie. And so Coach Mike and I had to have a conversation about who we felt should get that award. And ultimately, we decided because of her commitment to her team, um, the desire to not only do whatever her team needed, but she jumped in and played a completely different position than she played in high school. Um, I would get to huddles after submitting my roster and listen to what she was saying, and it was pretty much everything I was just going to say. So left me speechless most of the time. Um, and she would hold her team accountable and herself accountable um, to the point where they were making bets and challenges with each other about if that team scores more than 10 points, then this is what we're doing at practice. Like really pushing each other. Um, but she led a lot of that. And this was her first year here at CORE. And she made a ginormous impact. Um, so Liz, you get our MVP award this year. So good job. All right. Um, so next I have two really special people from our 17s team. Um, and it's kind of a fun award, but it's more to recognize their dedication to. So when COVID shut everything down, we started doing um, online Instagram challenges and Facebook challenges and stuff through GroupMe. And <laughs> I woke up one morning and there's notification of a video that is tagged in and what do you know? We have parents that are now participating in our Instagram challenges. So this year, 
to acknowledge your tremendous effort and dedication to your team and your kids. <laughs> and we'll have your kids give you some pointers later. But um, Jeff and Greg, you get our best bumpers award this year. <laughs> so. Every year at CORE, we have one big major award that's club-wide. And normally I do have everyone vote on this one um, because the kids, they, you know, they're pretty separated, but they do see each other uh, when we do scrimmaging and events, uh, team building events, club-wide events. Um, but this year, since we didn't have that opportunity, I just gave it a lot of thought. And um, this award is called the To The Core Award. And it goes to a player in the club that really exemplifies core. Someone that is confident, disciplined, and determined, but is also caring and compassionate and dedicated. And the person that gets the award this year is really special to core. Um, as a coach, you always hope that the kids, when they leave you, they go on to another program and they succeed or they continue playing into their adulthood. But the biggest honor is when one of those kids wants to coach. That tells you that you did the right thing and that you made an impact on that kid. And while I haven't had the honor of coaching her as long as some of the other kids in CORE, she's been a part of the program for three years and I coached her at Golden Kara um, for a couple years before she joined CORE. Uh, Coach Dave also coached her at the YMCA. Um, the award this year goes to Rachel Adamson. And Rachel, even though she hasn't been able to be placed on a team every year because of her age, um, she's actually our only senior this year, and she's just graduated, so congratulations on that. I know I uh, did reach out and make sure you got a card and everything, but... Um, the fact that she agreed to come back again this year as a practice player again. And not only that, but she accepted the offer to be an assistant coach on our 13s team was a huge deal. Um, without even being prompted, a uh, very proud coach moment for me was they have a group me and she unprompted the first tournament sent them an awesome little message of encouragement for the first tournament into that group me um, and she made sure to communicate for today too just how proud she was of those kids and that touches my heart in ways I can't even explain um, and she's just always been a trooper and does whatever we need her to do is the best probably team mom <laughs> kind of role for for her teams that she's been a part of. Um, and so I'm very, very honored, Rachel, to give you the To The Core Award this year. I would be very remiss without making sure I reached out and said thank you to a lot of people this season. Um, again, this season's not possible without, without everyone's help. Um, it takes a village and uh, as a small club and I don't have to feel like I'm always doing this by myself and that's more, I'm more appreciative of that than you'll ever know. Um, when COVID hit, I tried really hard to try to keep the club engaged. And so I want to give a special shout out to the kids that really went above and beyond to make sure that they were trying to help promote our Instagram and Facebook posts and our little challenges that we had. So, um, Elisa, Victoria, Shay, Ella, Rachel, Gabby, and even Lizzie who isn't even here anymore. She's overseas um, and very much missed. So we love you, Lizzie, and thank you for still doing our core challenges. Um, and of course, Jeff and Greg. <laughs> um, our junior coaches, Megan, uh, who also actually, I coached from fourth grade until her junior year of high school. Uh, she came back to coach this year too, so that was super special. Um, so Megan and Rachel for our junior coaches, and then of course, the rest of our staff. So James, Dave, Brianna, Elena, Kyle, and Emily. Um, our DU psych consultants, uh, Katie, Allie, Ashley, Chris, um, the other Allie, 
and I know I'm missing one and I'm so sorry, but I don't know who your assistant was. Um, we have some really special parents that do a lot for the club. Um, Greg, our photographer um, at Riffle Images that, that does all of our still photography. Um, and Gina that does all of our photos, um, our photos, video editing, video editing, I can speak. Um, and most importantly is Coach Mike. So I think everyone knows, although our team apparently didn't know, some of them didn't know that Coach Mike and I are married. <laughs> um, that was fun to have the light bulb go off at one of our practices one day that we had the same last name. Um, but none of this core values wouldn't exist without Mike. Um, he, he keeps me going on the days that I don't feel like going. Um, he runs our conditioning program and makes sure these kids are healthy and fit and performing at the best level that they can possibly perform at. Um, and this just wouldn't be possible without his help. Lastly, I just want to close with some information about next season and what to expect because it, it could end up being a little different. Um, so as you've seen the emails, June 15th, which is Monday, I will be sending out our early commitment contract offers uh, for the club. What that means, just to recap what the email says, is because you're already a member of Core Values until July, I'm allowed to offer you a contract. That contract is only going to be accepted from June 15th to June 17th. If you do not return that contract, then your child does have to try out in July for the 15s through 18s teams and August for 13s and 14s. Um, the tryout information is online if you're looking for specific dates for that. Um, those contracts are going to the primary email address that you put on your sports engine registration way back in September, October last year. Um, so please make sure you're checking for that. Um, those contracts will also have an attached deposit if you are choosing to return to CORE, and that deposit will be due on July 1st. So in order to secure a spot in the club, that's, uh, that contract and deposit needs to be received. Um, at this time, I'm only accepting those contracts back if you're coming back as a rostered player. So practice players at this time are not receiving those contracts. Um, you are more than welcome to try out in July. I'd love to be able to reassess you and put you back on either the team you were a practice player with or a team that's a better fit for you so that you can actually be on a roster. Um, and lastly, important to note, because we're a small club, and especially with COVID and all of the things that have been changing, that also means your rosters could change, your practice locations could change, and your coaches could change. Um, right now, our practice facility situation is a little icky, as you all know. Um, since most of you are in Jefferson County, Jefferson County Schools, they don't really have a plan yet that they've let us know. And if they don't have a plan, then we can't really have a plan uh, because it not only affects the schools, um, Denver Christian High School that we use for a facility, but it's also affecting the rec centers that we use for facilities. So right now I have one facility secure because they don't fall under those, those mandates for rec centers and schools. Um, so our locations could change. And I won't be able to tell you where you're gonna be until August or September or whenever the state of Colorado and Jefferson County makes changes to the regulations. Um, I feel like we've been a little spoiled here at CORE because unlike other clubs, I really push to make sure I have all of this in order before tryouts. So when I send you your contracts on a normal year, you already know where your practice facilities are, what days and what times you're practicing. And that's been something kind of unique to core because a lot of other clubs don't do that a lot of other clubs have tryouts make teams and figure out the logistics later like they might not even have coaches for the number of teams they have when they have tryouts they'll start the season and still try to find coaches i don't do that we've never done that um this year i know we have coaches i'm doing my best on the facilities so i just ask that you please um be as patient as possible and understandable and understanding and flexible um, and knowing that 
You might have to drive a little bit further this year, but if you believe in what we do, I hope you believe it'll be worth it. Um, another change for next year that we kind of went back and forth on is we're not going to have a second day or a third day specific, specifically for conditioning. Um, we're going to integrate conditioning into all of the team's practices next year. So this will cut down on the number of nights that kids need to be in the gym um, to free up some more time. When we started core, that was important to me is we want them, the kids, the families to have more time for what they need to do. And while we love having the separate conditioning practice because that's what we can just solely focus on, um, it does put stress on you and so we decided to take some of that away. Um, the tournament structure for next year is also changing. Something brand new to CORE based on your feedback, which is we are going to have all of our teams participate in Colorado Crossroads. We are going to have all of our teams participate in all six powers instead of skipping the ones that surround uh, normal spring break. And then our 15s through 18s teams will also be doing um, the RMR Classic and the RMR Showdown. So those are no longer optional tournaments, they're included tournaments. Um, we are also going to be watching team performance and potentially adding tournaments throughout the season based on team performance. Uh, the state of Colorado, we do now have AAU back in the state of Colorado as well as JVA. And so we might be looking into doing some of those events um, if the teams are being really successful. Um, and kind of showing us that they want more. Um, lastly, kind of in closing, I guess, I just want to say again, I can't say it enough, thank you. Um, especially right now. This season ended in a really icky way. Um, it left a lot of our players really sad or angry we're confused, um, which I know impacts the parents, it impacts our coaching staff, um, and impacted this. Here we are, right? The new norm, doing everything video-wise. We really, really hope to see high school sports start again, and if they do, we hope to see all of our core players out there. And please let us know if you get to go play high school where you made the team at so we can come watch you because we will we do every year our core values are confidence discipline and determination and right now with our society with covid with everything going on i i believe now more than ever that those core values are going to help all of us get through this time and it will get better so hang in there we love you guys a lot to the core.